Hey guys, it's Jenny. Welcome back once again to Solid Gold and welcome to day two of Vlogmas. I'm just gonna start my day off with a breakfast drink. I don't really have time to actually sit down and eat a meal, so I'm just gonna make a quick breakfast drink and then get started on all the animal tasks that I have to do today. So let's go. Yep. I don't know about you guys, but I am not one of those people that can just skip breakfast and be fine. For as long as I can remember, I have always woken up completely starving. Speaking of waking up starving, check out Roger. Roger, is it breakfast time? Look at how many more toys are in Grimm's bowl this morning. It's time to let Henry out and feed him too. Hi Henry, good morning. Oh my goodness, does he ever want to come out? Come on, little guy. Hi, good morning. Good morning. All right, now all my pets that are mammals have been fed. I just have to feed everybody else still, just. It's <laughs> a lot of work. Uh, but yesterday I did a poll on the new community tab on my YouTube channel and it seems like what you guys want to see the most in today's video is my 90 gallon tank. So I'm definitely going to show that a little bit later on in the video but I want to go out to the fish room first and take care of all the animals that are out there first but here's a quick glance. You guys like my cat butt magnets? <laughs> Let's go out to the fish room and feed the leopard geckos, the dart frogs, and the goldfish that are out there. I just remembered something. So right before I woke up last night, I had kind of a scary dream. In my dream last night, I came out here and I shone a really bright flashlight back into that wooded area and I saw like probably like 20 sets of eyes staring back at me. And at first I thought they must be raccoons. But then I realized that it was something scarier than that. They were wolves. So I went inside and I started watching from inside there. And all of a sudden, one wolf came walking out of the woods and came up here, slashed a hole in my screen room here, came into the screen room and was like up at the window staring at me and growling at me. And then I realized that it was emaciated, but not just emaciated. When it turned to the side, you could see that its, its flesh was like coming off of its bones. You could see its... It's the vertebrae of its neck and you can see like flesh just kind of like barely on there tendons and stuff like ew, gross it was like a zombie wolf basically and for some reason it got in like this door was open a little bit or something so it got in that door but I was on this side and I was like as soon as it walked in I walked out so I was staying away from it and it grabbed like a lamb chop or something for some reason I just had a random lamb chop laying in my house yeah it was just a really weird dream hello fish room let's start by checking on my leopard geckos Sylvia and Lucy I see a tail whose tail is that it's Lucy <laughs> look at her fat tail so the last time you guys really saw her she had a much skinnier tail than this and I've been able to just really really feed her up. She's doing really good. She's got like beautiful undertones of like a pinkish lavender with her yellow pattern on top and beautiful gold eyes. And look at that cute little tongue. Hurry up. Oh, come on. I don't want to squish you. All right, fine. And Sylvia's in here. Oh, Lucy's in there too now. Sylvia's my feisty one. Let's put you on my shoulder. Come here. There you go. How's that? How's that? She's like, I'd rather be in my cave. Bye girls. Let's actually go inside right now because I want to show you guys the rack of terrariums I'm getting from custom aquariums that is going to house my leopard geckos, my dart frogs, and maybe a chameleon in the future because I'm really excited about it and I wanna show you guys the finalized plan. Hi Roger, can you smell leopard gecko on me? This is the plan that I drew up for unit five. Unit five is my rack of terrariums. It's gonna be a three level rack. So the cabinet with sliding doors on the bottom will allow me to have a lot of room underneath the tanks here to put some reservoirs for the misting system. The top two rows of tanks are gonna be hooked up to a misting system, but the bottom row is not. The bottom row is just gonna be two dry reptile tanks for leopard geckos and the dimensions of these, they're two identical tanks that are each 30 inches 
long by 18 inches tall and 24 inches deep. And on the second row here, these are gonna be two identical amphibious tanks, each 30 inches long again, uh, about 18 inches tall and 24 inches deep. These are gonna be for my poison dart frogs. Right now I have a group of Dendrobates tinctorius patricia, which you guys have seen plenty of in my videos. They're gonna go in one of these tanks and then in the other tank I can get a group of a different species of poison dart frog. And here I have the spec sheet that was provided to me by Custom Aquariums. This is incredibly detailed, you guys. Every single last little detail is specified on here and checked and double checked and triple checked for accuracy. Uh, these, these tanks kind of threw me off at first because they're not actually drawn to scale. You can see the height is 18 inches, length is 30 inches. So these amphibious tanks are kind of like the Exoterra reptile tanks, if you've seen those before. Actually, the one, the tank that my leopard geckos are in now is an Exoterra tank. But the bottom of it holds water, and the top of it has uh, sliding doors that you can open, so you can actually access the aquarium from the front. And since they hold water on the bottom, you can, you can make this water depth as, as deep as you want, by the way, too. Mine is only six inches. I only need enough space to accommodate a false bottom so I can make sure the water drains properly in these frog tanks. But if you want, you can extend this depth really deep. Just like the tank that I showed you guys in the lobby of Custom Aquariums. They had a huge amphibious tank there in the lobby. It had a pretty deep area of water with all kinds of fish and even turtles swimming around in there and then the top had sliding doors where they had actually a chameleon living up there and it was this really big awesome beautiful tank so a lot of different things can be done with these amphibious tanks i'm just using mine as dart frog tanks for the middle rack everything is specified there's going to be a drain hole drilled in the back panel here there are also drilling holes in the top glass for me so this is the top glass panel and they're drilling holes uh, of a very specific diameter and a specific uh, placement on the top of the tank for me to hook up my automatic misting system. So everything is everything is included on here. It's really awesome. And then you can see here up top there's another row of amphibious tanks and I made these ones quite a bit taller so I can have some more arboreal types of animals in here. So clearly I'm super excited for that rack of terrariums from Custom Aquariums to finally show up but the first tanks that are gonna show up are two identical uh, racks uh, that each hold two 100, 120 gallon tanks, which are gonna be for my goldfish. And those ones should be showing up sometime mid-December, so this month, really excited. All right, froggies, how are you guys doing today? I've had them for four months, and they were somewhere between three and four months old when I got them already, so they're probably about eight months old now. And it's not until they reach, I think it was like 11 months, old or so that you can actually start telling the sexes apart. With this species of poison dart frog, the females can become really aggressive with one another. So as soon as I'm able to sex them, as soon as they get old enough that I can do that, I'm going to just probably keep one female and maybe even just one female and one male. But I don't know, if I get lucky enough that only one is a female and the rest are males, then I can probably keep the whole group. All right, guys, I've got my Dandy Randa's Super Gold Gel food here, and I'm about to feed my goldfish. But before I do that, I actually want to show you guys what they look like from the side. And this will also be the first time that I've ever seen them from the side, because right now I have them living in this 127-gallon tub. And, you know, it works perfectly fine. They do really well in it, but I kind of miss being able to see goldfish from the side. So I just have this like little two gallon tank set up and I'm gonna put each one in there one at a time so we can see for the first time together what they look like from the side. This is exciting. I'm gonna scoop you up, transfer her over. Oops, <laughs> I spilled. That'll happen. Hi you, oh my gosh. <laughs> All right, I'm gonna put her back and get the other calico now. Come on, you. I 
I pretty much love everything about the body shape of this one. I'm not even exaggerating. I really like that it has a nice compacted body. The other one had good eyes, really good eyes too, but I prefer the eyes of this one. The eyes are nice and small, they're really neat, and they're perfectly symmetrical. They're just awesome. All right, let's put you back. Come on, pretty. Probably wouldn't be fair to overlook the little guys, now would it? Here's the first one, the all red one. And here's the batik scaled one. Look at these little cuties. Oh my gosh, they're so fun. I just love them. You know what, let's actually feed them in there so we can watch them eating from side view too. That would be cute. I usually squeeze the gel cube in between my fingers a little bit just to break up the structure of the gel so they can actually bite off pieces a little bit easier. While those guys are eating, I'm gonna hand feed the big ones inside the tub. All right, who's gonna be first? Come and get it. There you go. Come here. <gasps> Come on, there you go, you're so close. Nope, overshoot, you overshot. It's right. There you go. Finally got it. Hey, you want some more? So cute. Here, come get your other piece before the other one eats it. Now that we've sufficiently played with some leopard geckos, frogs, and goldfish, and I've got my camera equipment all packed up with me, let's go back inside and check out the 90 gallon tank. As promised, it's actually really due for a water change, so We'll get that out of the way today too. As you guys know, I was having some problems with my discus, and as you can clearly see, they're no longer here. They all did pass away. Uh, I don't know, you guys, they, there was something not quite right with them from the very beginning, and I'm not saying that, that I didn't make any mistakes or anything like that, but there was definitely not, something was wrong from the very beginning, because when I first got the discus, I could not get them to eat anything except for frozen bloodworms. They literally rejected everything. Even if I soaked it in garlic, they rejected it. They rejected flakes, frozen beef heart, pellets, gel food, this frozen food that's formulated specifically for discus. They would sometimes peck at brine shrimp, frozen brine shrimp, and they would usually reliably get excited about frozen bloodworms. Now unfortunately frozen bloodworms aren't really good for discus, so it was a bit of a conundrum because that was literally the only thing that they would eat. Even if I withheld bloodworms for a while and tried to offer different foods, they would never, you know, kind of get hungry enough to finally eat something else. They just would not, no matter what I did. So I really just, I'm not super happy about the experience that I had with my discus, but one good thing that I guess came out of it is now I've got this uh, 90 gallon tropical community tank going with my black phantom tetras who are doing really well and my two long fin albino bristlenose plecos which you can't see right now because they're really good hiders, but you can certainly see evidence of them because <laughs> they are they are pretty messy fish, they do poop a lot. A note about the baby plecos too, so if you guys have been following some of my other videos, you'll know that my two adult plecos, I, I got them when they were, I think it was like, how old were they, like three months old when I got them? And since then they've grown and I've been able to tell that one is definitely male and one is definitely female. And they spawned twice already now. The first time I still had two discus in the tank, plus I had all these tetras. So even though I knew the male was going to try to keep the baby plecos in the breeding cave and keep them safe from the other fish, I knew that there was a pretty good chance that some of the other fish would come along and try to peck, pick them off, pick off the babies. So I moved the, the babies inside the breeding cave and the dad pleco into a separate separate tank to have them grow out in that tank. Once I moved him into the grow out tank with all the babies, he was fine at first, but then he kicked all of the, the babies that had just newly hatched out of the breeding cave. And then I woke up the next morning to find that they were all gone and the only thing that made sense is that he had eaten them all. So after that, I put the male back in here, put the breeding cave back in there, and just a few days later, they were back at it again. I saw them kind of scuffling around <laughs> inside of the breeding cave. And then a couple days later, I saw that sure enough, there was a new batch of eggs in there. And at that point, I decided I wasn't going to intervene at all with the second batch of eggs. I don't really want to produce more plecos. It's not really my goal here. I'm actually having to consider this tank as 
contaminated with whatever it was that killed off all of my goldfish that I used to have because I took media from the goldfish tanks, took cycled filter media from the goldfish tanks to jumpstart the filter of this tank. So I unfortunately have to consider this tank and all the fish in it to be contaminated and possible carriers of whatever it was that killed all of my goldfish. Even if these fish aren't you know, seeming to be affected by it, they could still be carriers and the water and the, the whole environment in the tank could still be contaminated and kind of a carrier of that problem. There's only so many plecos that a 90 gallon tank can hold and if I have like tons of baby plecos being produced, I won't have anywhere to put them. So I'm not going to try to breed my plecos, I'm just going to uh, just have my two adult plecos. But anyways, they did breed a second time. I had some tiny little babies that ended up getting scattered around the tank and it looked like they were foraging for food and doing okay. But every day I looked for them and they were really good hiders too, so it was hard to tell. But every day I came back and looked for them, I counted fewer and fewer and finally there was, I couldn't find any more left. So probably what happened was the babies just couldn't find enough food in here or something like that. They just couldn't survive very well in this environment, so they're all gone now. I just have my group of black phantom tetras and my two albino bristlenose plecos, flotsam and jetsam, which I adore. I really love those two fish. They're awesome. And so far, so good. I would love to attach some little anubius plants on the driftwood there and make it look like a lush underwater forest. That'll be a project for another day, but for now, this thing just needs a massive water change. What do I have, Sammy? You want some? All right, but you can only have a little bit. Well, while the tank's filling back up, I'm gonna take this opportunity to take a lunch break, and I'm having a tuna fish sandwich and some youth berry tea today. It's not as good as a London Fog Latte, but you know, you gotta mix it up every once in a while in my Tokyo mug that I got when I went to Japan for the goldfish trip. Did you guys see my Japan series of videos? If you didn't, you gotta go check them out right now, okay? The tank is almost full, so while it's just finishing filling up, I'm gonna feed the tetras some flakes, and I'm also gonna put this zucchini slice in the tank got this zucchini slice here on the clip already this is a really cool magnetic clip i if i can find a link to where you guys can get one of these i'll put it in the description below so let's put the zucchini slice in there and this is what the plecos eat they also of course eat like algae and biofilm inside the aquarium but you do need to supplement with a zucchini slice for them to eat as well. Let's feed the tetras here too. Come on, little guys. That's it for today's vlog, guys. It's now a few hours later than the last clip you saw and I've already changed into my comfy pants for the night. <laughs> I thought originally that my order of 600 solid gold calendars was gonna get here today, but yesterday I got an updated tracking notification that they're actually getting here tomorrow. So we have to wait until Friday's video until I can show those to you guys and start sending them out to customers and stuff. Uh, but yeah, I think that, uh, as you can see, I'm editing the vlog right now as we speak. Um, yeah, I think there's enough enough going on in this in today's video anyways already without that on top of it So I hope you guys enjoyed today's vlog and I'll see you again in Friday's vlog. Thanks for watching and until next time stay gold